It's a new product overview video for the new 2882 Y3 Legacy Equipped Steam Locomotives. Out of the package you will receive the instruction manual for the engine memory module, the instruction manual for the locomotive and tender, four replacement traction tires, the nut driver to remove the side rod screws so you can replace the traction tires, smoke fluid funnel, smoke fluid pipette, the engine memory module specific to the road name and road number of the locomotive, and the O-gauge compatible coupler for the pilot of the locomotive to allow multiple unit consists with other steam locomotives. These locomotives feature a die cast boiler, die cast tender shell, die cast front and rear engine frame, die cast pilot and trailing truck, as well as die cast tender trucks. The engines are equipped with Legacy Control, Odyssey 2 Speed Control, Legacy Rail Sounds, a fan driven main stack smoke unit, an operating coil coupler on the rear of the tender, as well as the new smaller outlined IR tether between the drawbar on the engine and tender. It is important to note that the switches for the Y3 locomotive are located on the bottom of the frame underneath the cab and firebox of the locomotive. The engine is equipped with three switches. The first switch is the program run switch. In the program position is where you place the switch to assign the locomotive its ID number under legacy control. For conventional operators, program is used as the E-unit lockout switch to keep the locomotive running in one direction at all times. The run position for conventional operators will allow you to access all three directional states and for command operators will allow you to operate the locomotive under the ID number that you have assigned it. The next switch is the Odyssey on off switch. In the no ODY position the Odyssey 2 speed control is disabled. When speed control is disabled it is not unlikely for you to be to, for you to have to rotate the red thumb wheel on the remote several times before the locomotive starts moving. We strongly recommend that you operate the locomotive with the Odyssey 2 speed control enabled, which would be placing the switch in the ODY position. The other switch we have on the locomotive is the smoke on off switch. In the no SMK position is where the smoke unit will be disabled and cannot be overridden by any command on the remote. No smoke is also the position you place the switch in if you're a conventional operator and do not wish to use the smoke unit. In the SMK position, the smoke unit is enabled for conventional operators and can be controlled between low, medium, high, and off for command operators. The tender of our Y3 locomotive has two important switches to point out. These switches are located under the water hatch on the water deck of the tender. They are the volume potentiometer, which allows you to manually increase or decrease the overall volume of the sound system. For conventional operators, this is the potentiometer you use to set the maximum volume of this locomotive. For command operators, you can leave this dial set to the maximum setting and adjust the volume off of the remote. The other switch inside the tender is labeled light on off. That's for the doghouse lamp, or the lamp inside the doghouse on the tender. In the on position, the doghouse lamp will be illuminated, and in the off position, the doghouse light will not be illuminated. That doghouse light is only controlled with that switch and cannot be toggled on and off using a Legacy or TMCC1 Cab 1 remote. Now before we place our locomotive on the track, we want to make sure we perform a little preventive maintenance by applying some light oil to the axles and side rod screws of this locomotive. Using an oil applicator with a needle tip, we're simply going to apply a small drop of oil on the axle where it goes through the bearing in the frame. This will do several things for us. One, it will prevent the locomotive from making any type of squeaking or squealing sounds that are undesired. Secondly, it'll help during the break-in process of the locomotive. 
Just a small drop of oil on the axle is all that's required. We want to also place a small drop of oil on the side rod screws where they go through the side rod. A small drop is all that's necessary. We want to repeat this on the eccentric rod or eccentric crank and the main rod spacer and as well as on the eccentric crank post that goes through the main rod and the main rod spacer and the side rod. A small drop of oil, once again, is all that's needed. You want to repeat this process for all the side rod screws and the eccentric cranks on both engines. You can also put a drop of oil on the trailing truck, on the axle where it goes through the trailing truck frame, and it's also a good idea to put a small drop of oil on either side of the collector around the axle that it rotates on and just work that in with your thumb and do that for all of the wheels on the locomotive it's also a real good idea to perform a little preventive maintenance on the tender as well using the same needle oil applicator we want to place a small drop of oil on the axles where they enter the bearings on the tender side frames do this for both sides of the axles as well as place a drop of oil on the roller where it rotates around the axle for the collector and work that in. Do that for both trucks and we're ready to put the locomotive on the track and put it through its paces. Now before we put our Y3 on the, lo on the track and run it through its paces we first need to tell our legacy remote a little bit about the locomotive. This is done by locating the orange memory module that came with the locomotive. We insert the memory module on the top of our legacy remote with the silver circle L facing up. Using our numbering convention of the last two digits of the cab number, we're going to assign our locomotive as engine 29. So we press engine 29 on the remote. Now we press the info key in the upper right hand corner and we press the button underneath load. It tells us a module is inserted it's the Norfolk and Western 11405 2882 cab number 2029 and it asks us if we want to load the engine data. We press the button under yes it tells us the engine data is loaded and to remove the module. Take the module out and put it in a safe location. Let's take a few seconds and show you what this has done to our remote. It's already assigned our name, so we can skip over this tab by pressing the scroll button in the upper left hand corner. It set our type to steam, pressing scroll again. It set our control to legacy mode, and pressing scroll one more time, it has set our, set our sound tab to legacy rail sounds. To exit this menu, we simply press the info key in the upper right hand corner. As you notice, the cab number appears momentarily on the screen and then disappears. We can get it to reappear by pressing engine 29. The cab number appears momentarily and then Norfolk and Western 2882 scrolls across the top of the screen. If we press the AUX1 key, the icons on our touchpad change immediately. These icons are volume up, crew talk, steam let off, volume down, the black circle is shutdown sounds, it's only a black circle when the locomotive is at idle, if we turn the throttle, get the locomotive moving, that icon changes to a black triangle, which is emergency stop when the locomotive is underway, turning the throttle back down to idle, the icon changes to a black circle again, which once again is shutdown. We have steam blowdown, tower calm, smoke off, smoke on, marker lamps on, marker lamps off, engine reset, rule 17 lighting enabled, rule 17 lighting disabled. If we press the speed bar one time, the icons now change again. We have our six preset railroad speeds, tower calm, smoke off, smoke on, a bar graph which is directly representative of the intensity of the chuff coming out of the locomotive, this bar graph can be raised and lowered by using the effects up and the effects down button under the speed bar option. By pressing effects up, the top of our cab says labor increase and our bar graph raises. By pressing effects down, 
labor decrease appears across the top of the cab and the bar graph gets lower. As this bar graph raises to the top, the intensity of the chuffing sound coming from the locomotive will increase drastically and as it gets lower, that chuffing will then drift off. Finally, the number one is roll speed. That's the very first speed step the locomotive will attain and maintain given any load or track condition, providing the Odyssey 2 speed control system is in the on position. Now before we get our Y3 locomotive running, there's two very important things that we still need to do. First, we need to assign the locomotive ID number to the locomotive that we loaded our engine memory module under in our cab. And secondly, we need to make sure we add smoke fluid to the locomotive. Now I've already taken the liberty of placing the program run switch in the program position. At this point, we need to turn the track power on. Now you'll notice when we turn track power on, the only thing that comes on are the classification lights on the front of the locomotive. The headlight, the cab light, smoke unit, the sounds, everything is off. And that is the way it's designed. So now, using our numbering convention of the last two digits of the cab number, we're going to press engine 29 and then the set button on the bottom of the remote. <coughs> That whistle tells us that the locomotive has taken the command, and at this point we can go ahead and turn track power off. We need to take the locomotive off the track and place the program run switch back into the run position. Go ahead and put the engine back on the track. And be sure to couple the draw bar between the engine and the tender. Now before we put power back on the track, we want to make sure we add some smoke fluid to the main stack. Using the 6-37841 Lionel Premium Smoke Fluid, I'm going to go ahead and fill up that smoke fluid pipette that came with my locomotive about halfway between the tip and the very first line. Put this down in my stack, add the fluid, couple puffs of air to make sure we don't have a meniscus down there blocking the smoke coming out. Now that we've added smoke fluid to the locomotive, we can go ahead and power up the track. On my legacy remote, I'm going to press engine 29, and I'm going to press and hold the power icon in the lower left-hand corner of the touchpad, and we'll get this startup dialog. This is the dispatcher. Do you copy? Copy that. I read your dispatcher. Over. Very good. Start up and hold. Copy that. Let's get to work. Out. Okay, now that the locomotive is started up, I want to tell you about two separate volume controls in these legacy locomotives. The first one is the global volume control. It affects the background sounds, whistle, and bell. And you can access it simply by blowing the whistle, and pressing the volume down icon on the touchpad. Each time you make an adjustment, there's a slight bell sound that can be heard. Right now we're down at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and blow the whistle so you can hear the difference in the overall volume of the whistle. And if we run the engine, the background sounds are lowered as well. Now if I keep pressing that volume down icon, I can take the volume all the way down to zero where there's no whistle, no bell, and no chuffing sound. To bring that global volume back up, I simply blow the whistle and press and hold the volume up icon. Now my volume is completely up at the top. The second volume control is just the background sounds. That is the steam idle sounds, the chuffing, the tower calm, the crew talk, etc. I can bring those sounds down independent of the whistle and bell by simply pressing the aux one or the straight arrow key and then pressing the volume down icon. And I can bring that volume all the way to the bottom without affecting the whistle or the bell. To bring that volume back up I simply press aux one or the straight arrow key and the volume up icon. And that brings my background sounds up. All of that information is inside the instruction manual for your locomotive. Now let's go ahead and uh, lower that volume so it doesn't distort the speaker on the camera. I'm going to go ahead and play the whistle for you. The bell. Crew 
crew talk? Dispatcher, trains buckle together. Can I get to the main line? Over. Negative. Hold your position. Over. Copy that. Standing by. Out. Tower calm? This is the dispatcher. You're clear to pull. Over. Thank you. We got a clear signal. Out. Now go ahead and get the engine running at roll speed, which is the very first speed step that we'll maintain. Go ahead and turn up the speed a bit. Now that we're running at speed, I want to let you hear what happens when you monkey with those effects buttons up and down. I'm going to go ahead and press the effects up button which will increase the intensity of my chuffing. I want you to watch what happens to the smoke output as the intensity of that chuffing increases. it's capable of making. That bar graph on the left hand side of the speed bar icon on the touchpad is all the way at max. Now I'm going to go ahead and press the effects down button so you can hear the drifting chuff come through the speaker. As we do this, keep an eye on the smokestack and watch how the volume of smoke decreases as the chuffing decreases. bottom of the labor intensity. Now you'll notice that the amount of smoke coming out of the stack when we're at the lowest labor chuff is less than what it is when we're at the maximum labor chuff. I'm going to go ahead and bring us back up to about middle of the road and continue the presentation. Go ahead and stop the engine. This locomotive is equipped with what's known as sequence control. And sequence control is merely a set of sounds that play based on throttle responses. As the locomotive runs continuously, the locomotive will randomly give off a grade crossing whistle sequence, some tower calm or crew talk. Basically it's sounds that will play without your input through the cab, simply based off a throttle response alone. So to enter sequence control mode, we simply press and hold the AUX1 key for three seconds. And the engine will tell us it's entered that mode by signal signaling us with two bells and a whistle. And it works like this. That tells us we've entered sequence control mode. Now I'm going to go to speed step one. But the engine isn't going to start moving. However, a couple things are going to happen without my input through the cab. Here we go, speed step one. Now I'm going to go to speed step two. The bell comes on automatically and the engine begins moving. Now that bell will stay on until we press speed step 23 into speed step 24. We still have manual control over the locomotive if I want to turn the bell off or blow the whistle. I can still do all that, but the engine will also make all these sounds on its own. So we're going to go ahead and just increase the speed and let you hear what it does on its own. Speed 
step 24 to 23, the whistle, or the rather the bell will come on automatically. Here we go to speed step 23. And as we slow the train down, I'm at speed step 2 right now. When I go to speed step 1, this happens automatically. To exit sequence control mode, we simply press the AUX1 key in the engine reset icon on the touchpad. The whistle confirms that we've left sequence control mode. Now we can add coal to our tender by pressing and holding that reset key on our touchpad. The longer we hold the reset key, the longer the coal loading sound will continue. When we let off reset, we'll get this dialogue. Our goal's full. Over. Copy that. Out. We can also add water to the tender as well by pressing and holding the steam release icon on the touchpad. And we get this sound. As long as we continue to hold the steam release icon down, the water filling sound will continue. When we let off this icon, we'll get this dialogue. Our water's full. Roger that. Out. If you don't fill the coal and the water as you run this locomotive over time, the crew dialogue that comes through the sound system will begin to change. It'll begin to start telling you that you're out of coal and that you're out of water. It's really a dynamic feature that adds a lot of interactive play value to the locomotive. All you have to do to change those, those dialogues is simply add coal and add water, and those dialogues will go away and won't come back until it runs down low on coal and water again in the future. And we'll go ahead and play the shutdown sounds for you, which is that black circle in the center of the touch pad. If I press and hold it, I'll get this dialogue. Going out duty dispatcher. Out. Now once my engine goes through the shutdown mode, you'll notice that the only thing illuminated on the engine are the classification lights on the boiler front. The headlight is off, cab light is off, smoke unit's off, as well as the sounds in the tender, they're off as well. Those sounds will, all of those features will stay off until you address the locomotive again and go through the startup procedure or interrupt power and bring it back on again in the future.